Participants are affiliated, warrant its completeness or accuracy, and it should not be relied upon as such. Good morning, Yuma. You're listening to Chamber Chatter on 560 AM KBLU. In studio, we have Rex Pope, who is the owner of Ship and Pope Associates. Good morning, Rex. Good morning, John. Yeah, we're not going to use the headphones because we don't do call-ins. If, if there's questions out there, they'll call Russ, and he'll you know, translate the message for us, and we'll have, answer questions that way on the air. We also have Caitlin Pope, who is a certified public accountant with Ship and Pope Associates. Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning, John. We're not talking taxes this morning, are we? No, uh, just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. That's not the primary conversation. There we go. Um, we love to have you on the 1st of June every year to talk about the School Tuition Association of Yuma. What an exciting endeavor. And I think, Rex, you two were at the, the, the inception of this thing, as I recall. Actually, this came up... Uh, it was founded in 1999 by my father-in-law and a group of other uh, Yuma businessmen, Al Face, Roger Sean, a handful of them, I'm sure I'm leaving off a number of them, but uh, they started it in 1999, the, the law origin originated in 1997-98, I've been working with it since 2004, and Caitlin's been working with it uh, since 2000 and 2016 16. was my first year with it. So what is STAY? What we do is we administer, uh, we're a school tuition organization. There are several throughout the state. And when the state came up with the law to allow for a tax credit uh, for individual taxpayers, which was the initial law, the state's constitution restricted the state from being able to issue this money to private organizations, especially if they had any kind of religious affiliation. So they came up with this concept of a school tuition organization, which is a charitable organization, but we have to register with the state. We have to be in good standing, comply with all the regulations. So STAY is a school tuition organization, and what we do is we receive tax credit dollars from Arizona taxpayers, and we award scholarships to children um, to attend private school in Yuma, Arizona. So, uh, just so I understand, I could write a check to Southwest Christian Preschool for a thousand bucks. Okay. However, with that is a nice donation, but there's no tax kiss. There's no tax benefit. Is that kind of how that works? Yeah, that's right. So okay. you can donate to a school, um, and most of them, you know, that would that would qualify as a tax deduction, um, as a as a charitable uh, contribution, but it doesn't count as a tax credit. You get a dollar for dollar tax credit on Arizona, um, on your Arizona return for donating to an STO like stay. Okay, so what is a dollar for dollar tax credit? Because again, me and taxes, we don't, we don't get along. All right. Sure. I get stuck in the weeds and I, I just have someone else take care of that. So what does a dollar for dollar tax credit mean? Okay, so the difference between a tax credit and a tax deduction obviously is the treatment of what's the net effect to the taxpayer. If you're in the highest rate combined federal and state, you're 50%. Highest possible combination, I would think. It's a little lower than that, but let's call it 50 cents on the dollar. But that for me is, would be a so, goal. So you, right. <laughs> you do a dollar donation, you're going to receive 50 cents less in taxation. Okay. On the tax credit, you do that dollar donation to an Arizona tax credit, you're going to save $1 of Arizona tax. It's like a, it's like a non-refundable tax payment. It is a tax payment. Now, federally, it's treated as a tax payment now. They've changed how that's treated when, when they revised the tax law a couple of years ago. Okay. And now this is part of what you've, everyone's heard about, this SALT limit. It's part of that $10,000 limit. Uh, so, you know, the difference of tax credit and tax deduction is cents on the dollar or the whole dollar. So if I write a check for 2000 bucks to stay, so then my tax liability to Arizona just got reduced by $2,000, the whole number, not the deductible number. The yes, whole number. the whole tax. Due. The whole tax liability. Got it, okay. Right, because there's a difference between the tax due. If, if you withhold um, enough 
or more than enough, then you either don't pay Arizona at the end or you get a refund. But if you if you don't hold, withhold enough, then you're going to end up owing. But that's different than the balance of tax. The balance of tax is the amount that you have to pay Arizona um, for that year. Gotcha. And there's a lot of assumptions in your in your scenario. The assumption would be that you have a two thousand dollar or more tax liability. If you don't then you would receive the full amount of your tax liability and any excess would carry over for up to five years. Okay. And then walk me through the, the federal, the, on the federal, so it's Arizona, it's dollar for dollar. Mm -hmm. um, and on the federal side? It's treated as a tax payment. Just like if you had made the tax payment. So there's no, there's no financial boom <clears throat> on the federal side because it's gonna be treated the same way whether you do the tax credit or you pay the tax to the state. And your state taxes are part of your itemized deductions on your on your federal return. So if you're itemizing, if you're not itemizing, it's still the same impact. So why wouldn't somebody do this? I mean, this, <laughs> why wouldn't somebody send some money to stay? It's just, there's a tax kiss, but there's also the benefit of helping young people get the education they deserve. Right, and you get to keep the money here in Yuma where you work and do business. Right. So, I mean, we think it's a win-win. Absolutely. So, there are four tax credits that, that are very active all the way up through April 15th. And there are people who have different viewpoints. And maybe they don't believe in school choice. They think that that's, you know, we should all be going through the same educational model. Um, and for those people, I. You know, I would encourage them to look at the other three credits. There's a public school credit, there's a foster care credit, and there's a qualified charitable organization credit. Um, we've got a, some names of those organizations, maybe we'll touch on them later, but um, we believe that it matters because education is the primary means for someone to escape their economic situation. Um, not everyone grows up in a household where education's even supported. But if that child is able to persevere and gain enough education or skill sets, because education comes in a lot of different ways, maybe maybe it's you know the ability to diagnose a, a vehicle or or construct a house. I can't do any of that. No, um, I, I'd but, pick but those the phone. who can, I rely on. You know, <laughs> so uh, I want the do the taxpayer to do what they believe in, and if they believe in education, like a school district supervisor or superintendent or a school teacher, if you truly believe in education, then you shouldn't be threatened by charter schools or private schools because it should be about the best educational opportunity for that child. And and all children learn differently. So so the environment that's going to be best for one child isn't necessarily the environment that's best for the other. I'm I'm one of three sisters and you know we all learn differently and and, and uh, um, kind of benefited from different situations. So uh, it's it's really it's an individual thing, and we think that they, the child deserves the best opportunity for them. <clears throat> and I think this idea of people learn differently uh, that twenty five years ago that that thought just never crossed anybody's mind. But now through science and through developing situations and things like stay, we know that people adults learn differently. We all do, and this really gives them the best chance for success. I think that, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, the best chance for success. So, okay, that we're talking about individual taxes. What about business? So, does it work the same way for businesses? Very similar. Um, <coughs> it's So, C corporations and S corporations can take advantage of the corporate tax credit. There's different rules for both pots of money. Um, but at the corporate level, there's a cap annually, and it's a first-come, first-serve. You have to apply for the credit. On the individual side, any in Arizona taxpayer, whether you live in Arizona or not, if you have an Arizona liability, you can take the credit. But for federal, you have to, or I mean for uh, corporations, you have to apply for the credit, be approved, and then you may fund. Okay. So, but is there a limit to how much I can donate then on the, on the business side? On the business side, there's a cap set by the state of Arizona. Okay. Overall, the um, corporate S corporation, C corporation donations, uh, or the credits can't exceed w about 123 million this year. So that's your cap. So get out your check. Right, that's the cap. Million. As long as you're not exceeding that, any one corporation could theoretically take that whole amount, but we don't usually see that happen. <laughs> okay, dare to dream, but but I, I've seen the the photo ops. You know, someone is putting in 50 grand. Someone's putting in 25 grand, and so that is. 
really all staying here in Yuma County. I think that's the big win. Right. 99.4% of last year's receipts stayed in Yuma schools. I want to talk about the schools and other organizations after the break, if that's okay. You're listening to Chamber Chatter, 560 AM KBOU. Oh, yeah. This is great news. I'll tell you something. I think you'd understand. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're still on Facebook. The yes. photograph that was in this morning's newspaper about my retirement, there's a story behind that, that picture. The <laughs> first Good Morning Yuma when I was announced as new executive director back in 2014, Deb and I decided on Friday night, I was going to leave the paper and, and take over the chamber. The newspaper headline that Saturday morning was, Yuma loses air service to Los Angeles. Yuma hits all time high unemployment. And, and, and I, I'm going, oh, this is not Chamber of Commerce stuff. I mean, I mean, the first morning, that Saturday morning, so I have my hands like that when I was telling the story. Randy took, Randy took the picture. Randy's just a phenomenal photographer. He caught, the, he caught that photo that was in today's paper. But that was my introduction. We lost our air service to LA and unemployment at all time record high. And I screenshot it, and I was like, why did they use this picture to announce your retirement? <laughs> like, of all pictures. Much appropriate to me. I like it. <laughs> 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 I and John explained, of course, there is a story. Yeah, there's always a story. My, my staff, my team, as they've learned, there's always a story. I assume he's not. I didn't do anything. Um, no, uh, during the breaks, uh, they're not hot. No, but I'm assuming it was lying during, during that uh, segment. Oh. What was what? I assume the mics are hot. Oh, yeah, well, well I'm, that's why I'm listening. That's why I have my headset on. I'm making sure you sound good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, doubt, I doubt you'll ever achieve that unless you've got some mixed word back there. I didn't say accurate. I said good. <laughs> It's not my responsibility, accurate. But, and, and thank you for the clarification. I'll, I'll speak to that, too. That you think all this money goes just to private to charter schools. I want to dive into that. In this all of our money goes to private schools. But there's other options. There are charter schools with options. We are back on Chamber Chatter, 560 AM K. The Leo Studio, Rex Pope, who is the owner of Ship of Pope and Associates and the Chamber's accounting firm. Good morning, Rex. Good morning, John. Caleb Pope, who handles most of our stuff. Thank you for keeping us out of jail, Caleb. Caleb Pope, welcome. who's a certified public accountant with Ship of Pope and Associates. Good morning, Caleb. Good morning. Um, we were talking uh, off the air a little bit about the stay and what you do as an organization goes to uh, private charter schools here. but. Go ahead. Private schools. Private schools. Charter schools or public schools. Got it. But there are other tax opportunities for other you know, organizations. You said there's three other pipelines. And the, oh, let's speak to that because I think that's very important because the deadline got moved to July 15th. So the deadline for, for taxes did get moved to July 15th, but these um, these credits, are, their, their deadline did not get moved. Um, so if you're if you're contributing to these credits, you're contributing for the 20, no. 2020 year. Got it. Okay. So thank you for the clarification. So let's talk about the other opportunities that, that are out there, Rex. I think that's pretty important as well. Absolutely. So there's a, a foster care. We there's a there's limits in each credit. Okay. The the highest limit is the private school tax credit, but then there's the foster care credit. Um, and a couple examples of organizations that do business here in Yuma that are eligible, uh, that are qualified foster care organizations is Arizona Baptist, Baptist Children's Services uh, and Jesse's Closet. The limits for that is 1,000 for married filing joint or 500 for other filers. Um, then there's the qualified charitable tax credit, the limit for married filing joints 800 and for other filers it's 400. There's 17 organizations in the Yuma area some really high profile ones, Achieve Human Services, Amberley's Place, Assistance League of Yuma, Crossroads Mission, Habitat for Humanity, Precious Treasures, that's in Somerton also, um, Yuma Community Food Bank, Salvation Army, all of those are, there's, that's a huge list at the state level for that uh, credit. And then there's the public school tax credit. 
That's designed to help fund extracurricular activities in the public schools. The limits married filing joints 400 and other filers is 200. Uh, when my daughter, who went to Gila Ridge High School, uh, I believe in school choice. I thought public education for high school was the best choice for her. Um, she was in drama club. My tax credit first first dollars went to the drama club at Gila Ridge. Um, I believe all four of these credits are important and a lot of taxpayers can do the maximum of all four of them. And that money would stay here in Yuma instead of going to the state. So I can do four, 800 on the, the uh, foster care, okay? So I can do that one and then I can do the other ones as well. You can do the maximum. So I can, I can stack them. Yep. Yeah, you can as long as as long as it um, is an over your Arizona liability. If it is, then it will roll forward for five years. Okay. Yeah, you couldn't do eight hundred to Amberley's and then eight hundred to Crossroads. They're in the same credit or uh, category. Right. So is that also a dollar for dollar tax credit in same. Arizona? Yeah. Yeah. The state of Arizona has decided that these sort of organizations are worth supporting with a with a credit so they're basically saying instead of paying us the tax the state of Arizona you can pay these organizations we believe in what they're doing and it'll be treated like you paid the state so much of this is like let the community take care of the community so shameless plug this is why you want to call ship and pulpit associates <laughs> because again these nuances are critical to the foundation of this community and the way that it helps you know downshifting back into state so this, are there a list of schools that qualify for state money or is there a limited list? That it's, it's the private schools in Arizona as long as it's a qualifying private school. However, we focus on the Yuma area schools. Okay. Um, so private schools in Yuma. We have 10 Yuma schools that we issued awards to last year. Um, and that's to our knowledge, every school, every private school in Yuma. Freedom Baptist, Hand in Hand, Immaculate Conception, Southwestern Christian, St. Francis, the Learning Pad, Yuma Adventist Christian, Yuma Catholic, Yuma Christian Academy, and Yuma Lutheran. All of those schools received funds from our organization last year. Some more than others, but their student population varies drastically between them. So with the School Tuition Association of Yuma, we're taking this idea to the next level because again, these young people at these schools are really benefited because I mean, they could not have had that opportunity. And that is important. But the other piece is, how do I get a hold of that money? Let's say I'm a parent and I think I want my child to go to Southwest Christian, as an example. How is there an application process? Do I have to know somebody? Um, do I have to buy you a beer? I mean, how does, All the above. No, um, <laughs> how does so this business work? There's, there's no cost to applying. We, we recently went to an online system, so parents can apply online. But when we went to that system, it allowed us a lot more flexibility. We used to not allow parents to apply until July 1st. They can now apply in March 1st, which is about the same time they're doing open enrollment in the schools. We used to stop the applications on January 31st. Now we allowed it to go all the way through the end of February. And, and the reason we stopped it there is at some point you just gotta close that window. And I don't want two open windows at a time. We're going to work with one school year at a time. So if we're going to open the new year on March 1st for applications, we're going to close the prior year application window. So that's how they apply. They just go online. They, they create a parent login. They log in. They apply for their, their all the students and their family. But they have to list a lot of financial information because it's required for us to be, uh, to be gathered by us to report okay. to the state. Then we receive funds from these different mechanisms, okay, whether it's individual tax credit or the corporate tax credit. That student will have different qualifications depending on income, depending on whether they came from a public school or if they've just continued through private school. Their qualifying factors along with the types of dollars we've received, how much money we have, all of these things drive how much we're able to help. Uh, the average award last year was $2,378. Um, and we helped 468 kids corporate. That was just corporate money. 468 kids, wow. $2,378. We issued over $1.1 million in scholarships for corporate last year. We could have done more. We made a strategic decision to carry some of that money into this year when COVID broke out. Smart. 
a, a really a smart move. Yeah, we're anticipating that there are going to be more kids that need the money, more kids that qualify for the corporate low income, and potentially less donations based on you know the financial uh, situation that everybody's facing right yeah, now. It's a it, these are extraordinary times, so it's a great move. And when did you make that decision? We made that decision around February. Um, we do awards all year long. Uh, we have to issue the award before the last day the school, or the, the school has to have the funds before the last day of the academic year. Okay. Um, so we're, last year's closed at this point, but we are gonna be issuing this month the first round of awards for the next school year. Parents, if you're out there and you've enrolled your kids, um, or you plan to enroll your kids in a private school in Yuma, Go online, www.azstay.org, AZ like Arizona, stay like, stay where you're at, azstay.org. Um, there's a parent login, you log in, apply, if you have problems, you can contact our office, we'll get that information out here shortly, but um, apply, we're going to be doing awards right away. I should know your phone number by heart. I apologize for that. The phone number for Chip and Pope and Associates is? 928 726 9470. I think I just had you on speed dial at the end. That works. <laughs> yeah. and, um, I text you. Yeah, if, exactly. if, there's a, if, if they don't have any other means, there is a paper application and stuff that we could get out online that they could download that and we could try to work with the parent. But it's imperative that they be in our, on, our online system because that's a, that is the entire award process that happens through that system. We're also communicating a lot through um, social media. We have Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and Instagram. So we have announcements going out when we're planning to do awards, um, when application windows are opening, that sort of thing. So you can also check us out there. So is it anonymous? If I'm uh, Mrs. Smith and I've applied, is it public knowledge? It's kept confidential? I mean, how does that work? We won't disclose to any donor who has applied. We will not disclose to any parent who uh, if a donor recommends their kid which is a whole nother thing that is possible <laughs> so I could recommend one of your grandchildren um, and that's attending a private school and stay may or may not honor that recommendation it's full discretion of, of the organization in the spirit of it they would always want to do as much as they could to honor recommendations right. um, but if and so, yeah, Mr. Smith, but, but no, it's that. important though that, that if I've applied for some financial assistance, mm -hmm. that it can be kept confidential. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and, absolutely. Yeah, there's no disclosure. And right. we, we have to um, collect some financial information just to see whether your child will qualify for um, the low income corporate scholarships, but, but that information is just aggregate and we don't disclose okay. individual. Um, information. The only people that may become aware of that is we are required to have a financial review every year or a financial audit depending on the amount of receipts. Those organizations, that CPA firm that's performing that service, and it can't be us or an affiliated CPA firm, it has to be an independent CPA firm, um, they may see some of that information um, as they're examining whether or not we were truly following the rules. Yeah, but it's not going to be made public no, okay. I, I Especially in, in this day and age, I think that's very, very important uh, for what you do and how you do it. But it's done first class, way above board. I mean, it is really a top-notch organization. And the fact that, that we got involved at the chamber, oh, shoot, what, about four years ago or so. Mm -hmm. And every year I just hear more enthusiasm from you two especially uh, and some of your board members who I'm associated with it's a powerful dynamic organization that's doing great things for our future and for the next generation of leaders so congratulations on a job well done well and we also want to thank you for for supporting it and it, it goes kind of hand in hand with the chambers thank you first so thank you for that focus yeah, we've appropriated that in a lot of please do a lot of our communication <laughs> that do. thank you first mantra has really um been scattered through a lot of our uh, posts and literature. Well, thank you, but first, that came by, um, we were talking about shop locally, shop locally, shop locally, but talking to Tom Rush and the folks at the investment group, he goes, we need to kind of take the next step and, and think about doing business here locally as well, whether you're uh, investing or investing in our future. So maybe there's a way we could, so it, suddenly I just came up with thinking of first, and boom, it, it, just, it just happened. And then uh, somebody had a quote, I think President Trump in his first State of the Union message, 
okay, he said, we want to thank America first. And I stood up and looked at him, he stole my line. <laughs> That's a good line. <laughs> but we, we want to talk about uh, why you do this work after break, if that's okay. You're listening to Chamber Chatter, 560 AM KBOU. Lost my train of thought on where we were at. Spring sports, as you. I got you. But is there a corporate side? We only do photo ops uh, and disclose amounts if that's the donor's. If they Perfect. want, if they want the victim um, out, that's mm-hmm. great. Right? Yeah, we and, don't and we can even it. do the check without the, that amount. We've discussed different things to put there instead of you know <laughs> priceless or something like that. If if they don't want the amount disclosed, we don't have to disclose the amount. Okay. And we've been very fortunate that you know we do have a lot of support, and some of those. You know, the fact that that Meisenheimer, one of the principals of Meisenheimer, is on my board. He's my treasurer. That's a lot of oversight. You know, exactly but, right. It's not and, like you have free reign to go do what you want. And Jeffrey Boston is no dummy. No, he's not. And the fact that we have uh, two CPA firms, okay, working cohesively, that's a microcosm of the way you want to operate. We, we just help each other out. And yes, it's another CPA firm. That's not the point. The point is helping kids. Yeah. Focus on the end result. Focus on what you want to have happen. The, the level of commitment. I mean, we're not the only organization in the world. Um, that I know that we strive very hard on the compliance side. We're not going to do anything that we believe is violating the spirit of the law. Um, some things that we that we do, like if, if, going back to that recommendation thing, if it's a low income kid and, and you know grandma and grandpa recommended that kid, if we're able to honor that, I'm going to give that kid 100% of that money. Right. Not, not 95. We not have to make sure that they, they have those qualifications. Right. They, if they qualify, qualify for those programs. And, and the school can take the money, and you know there doesn't appear to be anything going on where the, there's some swapping, why wouldn't I want to honor that? But if it's Richie Rich, okay, uh, and it's just someone asking for personal favors, like the time, that's, Can't do that. that's not the spirit of what you're, what you're talking about. And pay at each tax due. But for you, As always, you can head over to know our about website you for too. more information. Have a great day. Everything else is kind of sad. That was a commercial, I think. Yeah, it was. We are back on Chamber Chatter, 560 AM KBLU in studio. We're talking the School Tuition Association of Yuma with Rex Pope, owner of Ship and Pope and Associates. Good morning, Rex. Good morning. And Kaylin Pope, a certified public accountant with Ship and Pope and Associates. Good morning, Kaylin. Good morning. And they're also the Chamber's partner. Uh, they're our CPA firm. Um, do great work. There's lots of things I worry about at the Chamber. This is not one of them, so thank you for that. It's, thank you. The partnership is impeccable, so thanks for that. A couple of Chamber announcements today at 11 a.m., um, a virtual lunch and learn on Facebook Live. It'll be on the Chamber's Facebook page and many others. Who is advocating for children during this pandemic? Uh, the conversation started with um, Diane Alfres of Amberley's Place months ago. We wanted to do a lunch and learn in April because it's domestic abuse month and, and they have their week in paradise. So as this thing evolved, we're talking about children right now during this pandemic. We know that teachers, by law, they they have to report instances of abuse if, if they suspect it. So that line of defense right now is gone. The school's out. So we're looking at how can we learn on what to do? How can we learn on, on how to help uh, our youth? And I'm looking forward to that. There's a great panel from the Sheriff's Office, uh, from the Eden County Attorney's Office, uh, YPD, a variety of panelists that are talking about this. We want folks to send questions in via Facebook, please. Uh, the Q&A is important. Um, we're not going to disclose who's asking, but ask questions, please. The panel will be there ready for that today at 11 o'clock, Yuma County Chamber of Commerce Facebook Live. It'll be on Yuma Sun's Facebook page as well, uh, the county's Facebook page. But again, ask those questions on the Chamber's Facebook page today at 11 a.m. for virtual lunch and learn who is advocating for children during this pandemic. And then next Thursday, June 11th, 7 o'clock, a virtual Good Morning Yuma. Uh, uh, we had one last month. We had uh, Mayor Nichols do the State of the City Address. This month, on June 11th, 7 o'clock, 
sponsored by uh, AEA Federal Credit Union, will be in their conference room, socially distanced. It will be the county candidate forum. There's four posts uh, at the county level up for grabs uh, with uh, challengers. We have one supervisor's position open, and that's Lynn Pancrazy and Paige Meisenheimer uh, for that, that district. Uh, the sheriff's office, there's a challenger for uh, Leah Wilmot's position, the county assessor, and there's one uh, judge uh, that's, that's up for, for the vote. Uh, everyone else is running unopposed. So we have some, some videos of those who choose to bring in, send in videos if you're running unopposed. You know, hi, I'm whoever running for this office. Just get the name out there. But we really hope that the Q&A session with the candidates vying for these positions with a challenger will be robust. And again, get the information out there to uh, the citizens. Um, these are important positions. While the supervisor is geographic, uh, the assessor, the judge, and the sheriff is not. So I think this is important information for the folks. That's Thursday, June 11th, 7 a.m. Again, that will be virtual Good Morning Yuma on the Chamber's Facebook page and, and many, many others. But um, we look forward to that one as well. Okay, enough Chamber stuff. Back before we broke, I, I thought, why do you do this? There has to be an aha moment. There has to be a, this is why I do this. This is the inspiration. This is why I do this. I'll start with you, Caitlin. So I think those moments kind of come uh, when you when you get a personal story from a child who's been impacted, a kid that wouldn't be able to attend the school that's working for them. Maybe they've switched out of some other environment. Maybe maybe this is where they've always been, but they wouldn't be able to be there without support. And when we get those those personal mm -hmm. stories and, and see that, um, that's really important. And, and you really see the face of why you're doing this. So right. um, that's always very rewarding. And then the other reason is, keeping that money here in Yuma. I mean, why wouldn't you want to have the money um, stay in the community where you live and do work? That, that to me is the home run. It's not because you get more clients at Ship and Pope and Associates. It, it isn't, you know, but the fact that you're taking valuable time, talent and treasure to do this speaks volumes for your organization. What was your aha moment? What was your, man, I'm glad I'm doing this. You know, mine's kind of evolved. Um, <laughs> when, when I first heard about it, I thought there's no way this could be real. Uh, there's no way the state would allow. Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, yeah, Tooth Fairy. Just, it couldn't be. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I had confidence that my father-in-law wasn't misleading me. Um, and I, I, you know, participated with the organization until 2004 when I moved back to Yuma and started working with him. One of my first things that I did was take over the day-to-day -day operation of the organization. Um, and then you start seeing the impact. Um, you're seeing, you know, everyone that I know that this is a school choice advocate, we're not in any particular camp, whether that's a district school, charter school, or private school. It's, it's about the student, you know, in the best mm -hmm. environment. But then when you see that student who's in that private school environment that just feels overjoyed to be there and they're so appreciative and those families that know the difference it's making for their kid there, there's nothing you can do to to make it, that gap up I mean, it's it's all there in just a few seconds it's that smile that 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 little hug by that kid mm -hmm. or whatever thank you but it's it's the look on their face when they're doing it that you know it mattered that's that's really important as well. However, you're in an interesting situation in that the pivot for you is that your child went to Healer Ridge, but there are tax credits for extracurricular, which I think we need to touch on as well because that's just as important. It's viable so that those extracurricular activities continue on because Absolutely. they're always under attack uh, at the budget level. They're always going to be people looking to, to save a buck or two, and I think those things are important as well. The, the arts and, and all those things. So um, your daughter graduated. She's now doing drama now. And no, my daughter, yeah, yeah, she does a lot of drama. No, ah, I hope she's not. That's a different that. radio um, program. <laughs> yeah, yeah she, she's a college graduate now. She lived a year in, in Budapest with her husband, who's Hungarian. Um, but she's back in Yuma now. I've got a grandbaby and, um, you know, a lot of excitement there. But at that time in, in her life, her mother and I felt it would be best for her to be exposed to a bigger school, getting ready for college. 
um, be exposed to different viewpoints. Um, the downside of private schools is there's very few students. That's the downside. Right. Okay, it's, it's a big plus, but it's also the downside. In a public school where there's a lot more student body, there's always going to be cliques, but there's more cliques. So you have a better opportunity to find like-minded people to build strong relationships and friendships with. And that's what she did. She, her lifelong friends to this point were all friends that she met at Gila Ridge. They're not the college friends. They're those Gila Ridge friends. Right. Um, so I, I think that every student's different. That was the direction that we took our daughter because we thought it was the best choice. I graduated from St. Anthony's High School in Long Beach, California in 1972. And my graduating class, I think there was 150 kids, 145 or so. I know every single one of them. You know, in, in the private school, it's a different dynamic. Yeah, and it just depends on which environment that kid is going to thrive in, um, what's going to be best for them. So while an STO focuses on private schools, we really have a wider view of school choice where it doesn't matter if it's a charter school, a public school, home school, uh, private school, whatever works for that child, um, that's where they should be. Right, and that's how we're, that's how education is evolving. It's adapting. It's singular. It's it's really what's best for this individual child. You back to your, your and that could be different. You know, different siblings. Like Caitlin mentioned earlier, her and her sisters, they all learn differently. So you know, my son went to Uma Catholic. You know, it it really is very specific to the student. What's the win for that? What's the win, okay, to having that individualized approach? What's the win that, that you've experienced with a son at NYC and a daughter at Gila Ridge? What's the victory? Well, I think they would both say that school is just a waste of time, right? That's what every student <laughs> okay. says, right? Okay, <laughs> okay yeah. that, that, yes. with that said, um, I think my son required more supervision than my daughter at that point in life. Okay. Um, so being in a smaller class environment had what I, what I believe was higher accountability. Um, now, I wasn't in the classrooms with them, so I really don't know, but what I do know is this. I am an interactive learner. If I had to learn everything through reading and analyzing, I'm gonna learn a lot slower than if we were to be in a lecture and it was a back and forth lecture like this. Um, and that's a lot of college environment, is lecture where it's interactive lecture. Mm -hmm. I thrive in that environment. So for me, I know my learning styles. It's harder to, to know that for your child, but you're the one that work, works with them every day. You know better than the school would know. And who's the school to dictate to you how your child must learn? Right. Find the best environment for them and put them in that environment. And for me, uh, parochial school, there are certain disciplines applied that aren't necessarily applied at the public school side. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I got my knuckles cracked in grade school. So I'm surprising I have such good penmanship because my knuckles got cracked often. You're probably misbehaving a lot. Uh, <laughs> another, 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 <laughs> another radio program. But, but I think the disciplines applied at, at that level is just different and, and for a variety of reasons. Back to school tuition, uh, uh, tuition uh, your organization stay. You talk about an STO. So there's different ones, the school tuition organizations? Yeah, there are many okay. um, STOs in the state of Arizona. Um, we're one of them. We focus on Yuma. That's our focus. We're School Tuition Association of Yuma. Um, we'll honor uh, recommendations when we can if it's for an out-of-town school, but our, our main focus is to try to keep the money in Yuma. I think Rex said earlier that 99.4% of our, of our funds that we brought in um, last year stayed right here in Yuma. So that, that's our focus. Um, that's kind of what makes us a little bit different than the other STOs is right. the, the local focus but, here. But if you had a grandchild in Mesa and they were in a private school and you wanted to um, you know, recommend them and we were able to honor it, that private school just has to do an agreement to participate with us. Okay. And if they, if they fill out all of the, the paperwork and they say we were, we're going to follow the rules as written and presented, um, then we'll work with that school. If word gets out, okay, people really start to understand this concept, the state will have zero tax, income tax revenue. I mean, seriously, is there, is there a cap? I mean, this is, I'm thinking really way down. Touch on the savings. Well, so there is a cap for corporate. There's the $123 million cap, and it, it changes year to year. It's indexed. Right. 
Um, and there's the cap individually. So there's um, 2365, 2365 is what a married filing joint couple is allowed to um, contribute in 2020. So there's a cap there if you're, if you're um, if your tax is above that, then obviously not all of it's going okay. to the STOs. But, okay. but there's already support that goes to these kids in, pro in public schools. So that's, it's on average about $8,000 of support goes to every child in a public school, yeah. be it charter or, or district. It's about $8,000. The average award to a student attending private school throughout the state of Arizona, this isn't just Yuma specific, is about $3,400. Okay. Okay. So we're talking thirty-four hundred dollars of tax dollars to help kids with school choice that would have been in an environment where they were paying eighty-five hundred or eighty-eight hundred dollars. Okay. So the state's not going to go broke. I was worried about that. I want to talk about that more after the break. You're listening to Chamber Chatter, five sixty AM K B O U. Those were the numbers talked about this morning, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the state's going to go broke because think about it. Or they've had to modify some stuff. They've had to modify some stuff. Because right now it's indexed to just keep growing. At some point they're going to. On the corporate, there was a cross section. Very, they could see it. They could predict it in the near future, where the corporate receipts were going to be less than the corporate left. So they had to make some modifications. Now, of course, conservative school choice advocates in um, the Arizona legislature are going to be very cautious in giving up ground because they want to make sure they're not this is under assault every year i'm sure every year through lots of different legislation um and it, it's because you know red for ed has gotten such a platform what it just, just what breaks my heart is red for ed if you're really about for ed what's wrong with school choice they look at it as destroying the public school system. That's all they well, do. It's, it's this is about that, education. It's not I, about a system. Well, I, know right? I know that. I know that. So uh, the, the, the folks on Facebook are saying, but however, Red for Ed did this, did that. And it, it did elevate some consciousness as far as teacher pay. It did some good things that way. However, teacher pay was already that was already agreed on yeah. before that before Didn't they walked out. Didn't twenty by twenty by twenty. You're right. 2020. Anyway, it's a political but, stunt. It, it was right. How, but they got they they got the attention they wanted. Right. But again, the fact that I can still contribute to uh, extracurricular activities is important. Okay, so that they, oh, absolutely. So they, get a little, they get a little bite off the apple as well, which is important. As I talk to every one of my Arizona taxpayers about this. I, every single one of them. And we'll I'll, give I'll them lists them and links to the districts as well as the, now, the other credits. Because I'm me, I have certain <laughs> favorites, right? What's and your favorite? Because I run my firm when I send my email list I send the list to the state but I send them quick links to the ones I believe are, are really good organizations and and what I always put in my list of places like Amberley's Place, Crossroads Mission, the, the public bank. school tax credit for food bank. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah we'll have, we'll have links to all the, diff the different districts, Union Union High School District, um, District 1, Crane, all of them because Those you can go on their website and do the credits for them and I mean we want as much money in Yuma as possible. Well, so yeah. They're doing business in Yuma. Yeah. I have no problem putting them on my list unless they are doing something I just can't believe. And, and I, that's why some people don't do stay. They just can't believe in promoting private education over public. But what's great is everybody has those opinions and there's something for everybody in the list of credits. So if you don't believe in that, you've got something to do. All of the greatest kids went to parochial school. But yeah, it was blue collar, hard working, two, two jobs to make it happen. Because it's important. We are back on Chamber Chatter, 560 and KVLU, talking the School Tuition Association of Yuma with Rex Pope, who's the owner of Ship and Pope and Associates. Good morning, Rex. Good morning. Caitlin Pope, a CPA with Ship and Pope and Associates. Good morning, Caitlin. Good morning. And keeper of the Chambers. Hmm. Not the books. If you just be, you make sure that we're they're doing it right, crossing T's and dotting I's. We appreciate that. Um, I want to talk about say I also want to talk about something else very very important. The 2020 census. We talked before going on the air. I want to pivot a little bit. People forget that the original intent of the census, okay, was for the electoral college and a seat at the House of Representatives. 
So it has evolved into funding a variety of things, um, from YCAT to a variety of nonprofits and, and organizations. But at the end of the day, we have a gut hunch that California is going to lose a seat and Arizona is going to pick up a seat. We, we, we have a hunch. We, but however, if it's not verified by the census, then it's just conjecture. So everyone, I, Yuma's doing about 50% compliance so far. Um, South County, Summerton, San Luis really needs to pick up the pace. Uh, Welton, this is really, really important. Um, this is not an intrusion into your privacy or we're coming to get you. The, the idea is we want to be at the table. We, we want a stronger voice in Washington, D.C. We want to make sure that, that, that Yuma County and Arizona has the proper representation. The other stuff it, it came way later, uh, and we focused too much on that other stuff, you know, the funding from the federal government, manna from heaven, hog at the trough. You can name a variety of cliches, but at the end of the day, it's about representing Arizonans. So if you have a packet on your doorstep, go, go online, really fill out your census. It's extraordinarily important. Um, I think the deadline got moved once. I doubt if it's going to get moved again. We just got to get off uh, our duffs and get this done. Um, and again, we did an email blast at the Chamber of Commerce yesterday, and I want to make sure I do it right. It's my2020census.gov, and that's my2020, 2020census.gov. Go to it, please fill it in. It took me, and I'm a slow, I'm a slow typist, I think it took me 90 seconds. I think maybe I was Googling on it. It, it, it. it wasn't very extensive. No, it's not. It doesn't take long at all. But it's extraordinarily important. So again, my2020census.gov, uh, please do that, please. It's, it's, it's really important. Okay, off that soapbox on another one. <laughs> you know, back to stay. The School Tuition Association of Yuma, you talked about 99.4% of the money stays here. Mm -hmm. So that's a testament to how you run the books and who is on your board and who's really leading the organization. I don't want to put you on the spot, but we talked about Jeffrey Polson before, uh, who's the treasurer now. And I think you were the past treasurer as well. No, I've never served on the board. I, I am the executive director of the program. Okay. And, but I've never served on the board. I've run the organization. Fascinating. That, that is not my place <laughs> at this table, no. But, um, you know, here's our board is, you know, my father-in-law, Lloyd Sunderman, who trained me to be a CPA. He's a retired CPA. Kelly Keithley of Keithley Williams Seeds. Jeffrey Polston, who's with Meisenheimer. He's one of the, the, the shareholders over there. John Garcia, a local attorney. Um, Janice Day, um, who is just an old Bible school teacher. Uh, I, old is probably not the right word, just an, an old school Bible school teacher, I guess. There's a right comedy thing. in there, I think. Yeah. Um, Reverend Mark Johnson of, Yuma, uh, of Christ Lutheran Church and Reverend Al Alfred Maese of um, Bible Baptist Church. So we have representation from a lot of different faiths uh, and different disciplines. Your board meetings must be exciting. When we get them all together, it's interesting. Yeah, I bet. It's hard to get everybody together. Yeah. They're a busy group. Yeah, yeah very busy. You know, at Good Morning Yuma, I'll, I'll recognize my board of directors, you know, please stand and recognize. Then I'll, every now and again, I'll say, if you're on any board of any kind, anywhere, please, the whole room stands up. <laughs> That's just kind of how Yuma is. We're connected and engaged. Um, right now, you're talking about 2020 taxes, right? <laughs> yeah. Do we have guidance yet for what could happen with stay, or we just have our best guess, or... Where are we with the 2020? Where are we ones? speculating we're yeah, going to be? Okay, you. so um, here's what we believe is going to happen. We believe that we're going to see significant reduction of corporate sponsorship just because of the unknown with COVID, the impact it's had on the economy. So where last year we were uh, around 1.8 million in receipts for corporate. From Yuma County only? From, from our, we received about 1.8 million in corporate money. For Yuma County kids, that that money is going to go to Yuma school Absolutely. children. Yes, um, we we and that was about double the prior year. Um, we expect this year will be closer to six hundred to eight hundred thousand. 
we have had people already telling us they plan to do it, but we expect the numbers to be quite a bit lower. We expect because of the COVID layoffs and we anticipate businesses folding, uh, higher unemployment, lower income from a lot more families. I hope none of that ends up being true, but this is what our anticipation is. Now we planned for some of that. We carried $615,000 of that 1.8 million over um, so that we can award that in the upcoming school year because what good would it have done those students if we built them up last year to be in this private school only to pull the rug out from under them in the following year. Great catch. So great we're catch. trying to make sure we're at least able to keep some stability on where those children are at. Um, and, you know, I I was wrong on my projections last year, grossly wrong. I would have <laughs> never good dreamed of hitting 1.8 <laughs> or 1. Point whatever it was. Um, I think overall we were just over $2 million in total receipts. Uh, so it big blessings. I hope this year is another shocker in a good way. That's coming up. Um, we're asking for any corporations who are interested uh, in doing the credit to get us their information by June 25th because the window does open at the beginning of July and we have to apply to the state on their behalf because there's that cap on total donations the state has to pre-approve any corporate contributions. Kevin, do me a favor, repeat what you just said, because I think that's very critical. I think that's why we're on Chamber Channel this morning. Right. Okay. So Arizona Please. State has a cap on the corporate contributions. Because of that, you have to pre-apply. You have to be pre-approved to make a corporate contribution to an STO. The STO has to submit an application on the corporation's behalf to the state of Arizona. Then Arizona has 20 days to approve the application that they're generally approved unless you hit the cap um, and then it's and, and they're approved on a first come first serve basis it can be really competitive we've seen it cap out in two minutes um, so if you want to do this get us your information by june 25th it's for s corporations and c corporations um, the minimum donation is five thousand uh, dollars and other than that the cap is that 123 million dollar limit <laughs> yeah. And, and here's why it's important for businesses. You can watch your dollars get recirculated back into educating tomorrow's leaders, tomorrow's business leaders. You can watch your money grow in, in front of your very eyes, but the deadline is again. We, we need the information by June 25th to be able to get all the applications uh, gathered and ready to be submitted at the beginning of July to the state. Because so the second it opens, we're it's, sending in 50 applications. Absolutely, and like again, we've seen we've seen this this limit, this cap, this 123 million dollars all taken up in the first two minutes of the window opening. I will have five before. members of my team queued up to submit different sections of that in different orders, so that we can get as much in as fast as we can. Because you know, it's so competitive. Because the statewide cap is this, and we got to shove as much as we can. Right. In. We want to get as, as much of the portion for Yuma as we can, so we need to do it as quickly as possible when mm -hmm. that window opens in July. Milliseconds matter because email, when it's date time stamped at their level, that's first come. That's you taking the ticket at the barber. Okay. <laughs> I haven't done that in a while, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember back right, when yeah, we could go to a barber. Exactly. Right? So the important thing is, so I would say I'm going to put in $25,000, so that's part of the process. Right. So then it's up to you to help them out. Look, here's how your year is going to probably shape up. Maybe you did 35000 last year. You can, it looks like we can do twenty five this year. So that's kind of where the coaching comes in from Shipper Boat and Associates. Right. On our clients, we can, we can help them kind of project that out. And if they're not our client, you know, they can talk to their, their CPA and get an idea of what they think their tax liability for 2020 is going to be. But the core of it is... The corporation can't go directly to the state. They can't write the check and take the credit. There's a process that has to be followed for that. Through an STO. Mm -hmm. AZstate.org, A-Z-S-T-A-Y.org, get more information. Or call our partners at Ship and Boat and Associates, 726-9470, 726-9470. The hour's gone by wicked fast again, it usually does. Thank you for taking time, it's been a, a delight. Thank you for having me. Thank have, you for having have me. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. You guys are awesome.